Good day, my students. My name is Ibdo. I'll be teaching you mathematics, especially your grade in your grade level, junior secondary school one or grade level seven. I will be teaching today development of number system. Development of number systems. What are the things we are going to consider under this broad heading? Number one, we consider basis of counting. Basis of counting. And also, we will look into tally system. What do I call it? Tally system. And also, we consider Roman numerals. Roman numerals. Also, we will consider under this same broad topic, we consider simple number code system. Simple number code system. And finally, under this, uh, under this broad topic, we consider place value system. And after the class today, I have some expectations from you. Things I expect you to be able to do after the class. Number one, I will expect that you should be able to count in different bases of counting that I will teach you today. I will expect that you freely use tally system. And also, under the Roman numerals, I will expect you to write numbers in the Roman numerals and Hindu Arabic numerals. Also, I will expect you to be able to use simple number code to use simple number code. And also, I will expect you to be able to state the place value of digits in whole numbers and decimal fraction. Let's start with basis of counting. Basis of counting. Basis of counting. On the basis of counting, what do we consider? We count numbers in different bases. As in, we group numbers in different capacities. We group in twos. When we group number in twos, then we say we are using base two. When we, we group numbers in fives, we group number in tens, we group numbers in sevens, we group numbers in twenty-fours, sixties, and so forth. But I will bring you close to the ones you are familiar with. We group numbers in sevens, six, sixty, twenty-fours, and so forth. Let me come to time. How do we count time? You see that we count seconds in sixties. When you count, you count, you count. By the time you get to sixty, we round it up to make one. So that 60 forms the basis of grouping seconds. And that is why we say 60 seconds, 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So we say 60 seconds make one minute. Meaning that 60 is a base of, is a base of counting seconds. So when you have 70 seconds, it's better to say 1 minute 10 seconds. You count the first 60 seconds and round it up to be 1 minute. So also, we count 60 minutes to be able to be equal to 1 hour. So we say 60 minutes make 1 hour. So 60 is a base of counting. Also, 24 hours is a base of counting. We say 24 hours is equivalent to one day. All these are bases of counting. Our old mamas and baba, they count in tens. When they want to count money, so that they will not be confused, they count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When they get to the ninth one, the tenth one, they will use it to wrap it and put it down. They count in tens. Some count in fifties. In bank today, they count in tens. The bank, they count in fifties. When they give you a bale of money, 
They say that is 50,000. 50, 50,000. 50, so that is what we are considering on the basis of counting. How is it related to us? Days, we say, seven days is one week. Seven days counted gives us one week. So how do we apply this in our day-to-day -day activities? Example one. Let's consider example one on the basis of counting. Example one, if a baby is five weeks and six days, how many days old is the baby? The question requires day. The question requires the data in day, not in weeks. But we have the combination of weeks and days in the, in the stem. Therefore, you will write, the baby is five, five weeks plus six days. Five weeks could be written as five times one week plus six days. Follow what I'm doing. Five times one week is said to be how many days? Seven days. Seven days make one week. So, plus six days. Five times seven days, that gives 35 days. Plus six days. 35 days plus six days, that gives us 41 days. And that is the answer. That is what the question requires us to do. Let's consider example two. Add the following. Question A. Minute, seconds. Two minutes, 30 minutes, 45 seconds, 18 seconds, one hour, two hours, 39 minutes, 26 minutes, 45 seconds, 17 seconds. How do we add? Let's see. Minutes, second. We have two, three, forty-five, eighteen. Yeah. Five plus eight. That is thirteen. We write three. We carry one. The one is added to four, making five. Five plus one. That's six. If we write the six then it will give us sixty-three. But 63 cannot stay there. When you are counting, you don't write the number that is up to your base or greater than your base. You don't write it down under that base system. Seconds is using 60 as basis of counting. 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Therefore, we cannot write 63 down. 60 seconds, yeah, will give us one minute. We transfer that one minute here under the minute section. So the 30 seconds that is on top of the 60, that makes it to be 63 seconds, that is what we are going to retain. So we write only 30. Then the 60 seconds will be rounded to one minute and it will be taken to the section of minutes. So one plus two is three. Plus three, that is six. Therefore, we have six minutes. Six minutes. 30 seconds. And that is the answer. For question B, we have her or hours, minutes, and second. Under the her, we have 1, 2, 3, 9, 2, 6, 4, 5, 1, 7. So, how do these together? 5 plus 7 is 12. We write 2. The one we carry added to 4, making 5. 
and 5 plus 1 is 6. If you write 6 down here, you will have written 62. But you cannot write something that is greater than the basis of your counting. The base of your counting. The base of counting in seconds is 60. 60 seconds is equal to 1 minute. So if we write this 6 down, we will have written 62. Therefore, we will not write that 6 down. We mean that that 6, that we make it 62, is 60. So we make the value of that 60, which is 1 minute. We let it come here. Do you get the explanation or I should repeat it? 62 seconds here. Out of that 62, 60 seconds is one minute. That is what we bring here under the minute section. The two on top of it, which is not up to the minute, we let it stay there. So one that we carry here had it to 39, giving us 40 minutes. 40 minutes plus 26 minutes, we have 66 minutes. But 60 is the base of counting minutes as well. 60 minutes make one hour. So we write only the 6 minutes on top of the 66. The remaining 60 is rounded up to be 1 hour and we transfer it under the hour. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 gives us 4. Therefore, we have 4 hours, 6 minutes, and 2 seconds. So that is the answer of this. Let's consider example 3. Suppose today is Friday. What day of the week will it be after 89 days? How do we go about that? All you need to do is this. 89 days is equivalent to use 7 to divide 89. 7 and 8. That's 1. It remains 1. Use the 1 with 9, making 19. 7 and 19, that is 2. Remaining 5. That means this is 12 weeks plus 5 days. If today is Friday, it will be Friday exactly after 12 weeks. Do you get the logic? If today is Friday, what day of the week will it be after 89 days? So do it this way. First know the number of weeks that we have there. You see, we have 12 weeks in these 89 days. We have 12 weeks, 5 days. It will be, it will be Friday after, it will be Friday after 12 weeks. Exactly. That 12 weeks is something like 84 days. That is 12 times 7. After 84 days, it will be Friday. Don't forget. Therefore, to know what day of the week it will be after 89 days, begin now to count on 5 days further after that Friday of 12th week. So, you count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the first one will be Saturday. Are you following? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I repeat it. After the Friday of the 12th week, it will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Therefore, it will be Wednesday to be Wednesday after 89 days. Let's consider example 4. If today is Sunday, what day of the week will it be after 35 days? This is what to do. 35 days means how many 7 do we have in 35? We have 5. So that is 5 weeks. Five weeks. Immediately after the first week, learn something about this kind of question. Immediately after the first week, it will be Sunday. Immediately after the second week, 
the day will still be Sunday. Maybe after the third week, the day will still be Sunday. Fourth week, it will still be Sunday. Fifth week, this fifth week, it is still going to be Sunday. Therefore, it will still be Sunday. It will still be after 35 days. I hope you get the explanation. After the first week, it will be Sunday. After the second week, it will be Sunday. And we have just five weeks in the 35 days. And there is no other days that spill over the five weeks. So it is, it is still going to be Sunday. Example 5. On Friday 15th of January 2023, my doctor fixed my next visit day to 80 days time. What day of the week will my next visit be? You want to know what day of the week that my next visit will be. So all you need to do is to write 80 days because my next visit is going to be 80 days time. So 80 days is the same thing as 7 times 11 plus 30. This is 7 days times 11. That is 77 days. And 7 days is 1 week. 1 week times 11, that is 11 week plus 30 days. That means if on that Friday, on the 15th of January, it was Friday, that means 1 week after that 15th of January, it will still be Friday. 2 weeks after, it will still be Friday. 3 weeks after, it will still be Friday. 11 weeks after, it is still going to be Friday. Immediately after exactly multiples of weeks, it will still be that day. So, but we have three days extra from the Friday that it will be at 11th week. So we now count three days on from Friday. It will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Answer is, therefore, it will be Monday, after 80 days. To be Monday after 80 days. So that is it.